Good morning, Health Club for Moms. My name is Deb, and I'm so excited to be here with you guys today on this week's Mentoring Monday. And we are going to talk about being a fun mom and how to enjoy your children and how to get an attitude adjustment on uh, not thinking about everything that's going on in the world, but just being focused in the moment with your kids. And so I'm just so excited. This is one of my most favorite things to talk about is how to have fun with your kids and how to make the most of the time that you have with your children. And so I'm so happy to be here. And um, if you've been around the Help Club for the past few weeks, we've had some amazing videos and everything that's been happening. We've talked about overcoming fear. And then last week we had Jen and she was talking about this most amazing uh, help that she's gotten from the Lord with her kids. And so if you if you have a moment, go back and check out all those videos from the last three weeks. They were so good. Okay, and so as you come on, be sure to say hello. And I have a quick question for you because I want you to begin thinking intentionally um, about, about what you're gonna be doing in your home. And so um, we are, the government is talking about, you know, different states are starting to talk about coming off of shelter in place. And, and I've been thinking a lot about this and I want you guys to answer this question. This is your question for today. What are some things that you want to keep from the shelter in place? What are some things that you want to adopt and things that because of the shelter in place, what are some things that, that have been going on in your home that you love and that you want to keep going? And so come on and tell me what you think about that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start us off in prayer real quick. God, thank you for every person here today. Thank you, God, for these videos. Thank you, God, for Help Club. I'm so thankful that I get to be part of this ministry and God, we just invite you into this time, into this video, and God, I pray that I would only say the words that you want me to say. I pray that you bring uh, just the women that you want to come uh, to this video, and I pray that it would be such an encouragement to each and every person who watches today. Come, Holy Spirit, we commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let me see who's on. Let me say hi to you guys. So the, hi, Kendra and Beth Ann and Danita and Elizabeth. All right, good to see you guys and Rhonda. All right, so what's your answer? What are some things that you want to keep in place? Hi, Anne-Marie. Uh, what are some things that you wanna keep in place from shelter in place? And so if I were just saying some things that I want to keep in place, my husband and I, you know, we're empty nesters. And I've been really busy the past five years <laughs> doing uh, with Help Club, and it's been so much fun. But I hadn't cooked uh, for a long time, and I would do takeout, and I was just really, really busy, and I was having a hard time balancing everything because I had never been so busy in my life as I have been the past five years with Help Club. And so I think one thing I really want to keep doing that I've been doing uh, that have really meant a lot to my husband is I've been cooking a lot more and I've been doing freezer putting things in the freezer and I've been making dinner special with my husband I've been lighting candles like I used to do and setting out the chargers you know like the gold placemats and and it, my husband said it's really meant a lot to him and he's been really having a lot of fun and another thing I think I want to keep is that um, we've had some really nice conversations uh, over walks uh, because he's working from home and so we go around uh, our neighborhood and we go for walks and we've been getting outdoors a lot more and I really want to keep that too. We've been going on hikes and, and really, really having a fun time. I usually go to the gym and so I've been getting my exercise, used to get it done early in the morning, but now with the shelter in place, you know, you can't go to the gym. And so I wanna keep those two things. I wanna make sure that I'm cooking for my husband and making him my first priority after the Lord. Uh, because whenever my kids were growing up, uh, it was easy. I could do that because I also had the children. And so it was always, you know, when the children were growing up, and this might be for somebody here in this video, but it's God and then your husband, then your children, then everything else. And so it's been really good for me to put my husband as my first priority again. And so uh, that's definitely something that I want to keep going. And it's been a really sweet time for the two of us. And I think also, um, I think that's it for me. And then um, what, what else do you wanna do? Are there any things, any changes you wanna make? Guys, we need to think about this moving forward. I mean, were you too busy before? 
I mean, I think we all need to think about this and, and ask the Lord about it. God, how do you want my life to look when this is all over with? What do you want me to learn from this? What changes do you want me to make in my life? And, you know, maybe God is saying to you, you were too busy. You know, I feel like um, another thing is dinners. Dinners, how are you guys feeling about dinners? You know, you've been stuck all at home all day with your kids and you're having dinners and and I tell you what, that is that is a wonderful priority to keep in your home. Just like with me and my husband, with you and your children, having family dinners together is hugely important. Having family dinners together is where you talk about things and you laugh and you have fun together. And and um, my son came over last night. We've been it's it's been an interesting thing. We've been. Um, kind of choosing to social distance, we choose our little our little groups. And so uh, with my daughter who's expecting her second and our grandbaby and our son-in-law, we just mainly chose, and I mean my son, it was actually his idea, but uh, we chose to quarantine kind of with them because I have my granddaughter every week because my daughter still has to work. And so we chose to you know, quarantine with them and not with my son because my son is 23 and he has a lot of friends and, you know, it's a little harder for their age group to quarantine, but he's done really, really well. But last night was the first night we've had him over for dinner in a long time. And we sat outside with him. I lit candles. We turned on the pond. I had the music going and we sat at the dinner table outside. We have this little heater outside to keep us warm for two hours. And he talked to us about things that he's been learning and things that he's been thinking about God and struggles he's been having. And it was beautiful. But guys, this started with my son and my daughter when they were growing up in our home by having dinners together. And so I hope that you guys are going to continue thinking intentionally about your life when we're off of shelter in place. You know, are you too busy with sports? I mean, if you can't have family time and sports are in the way, you're too busy. I mean, the family is supposed to be the focal point of your life. The family is the most important thing, you guys. I, I And I'm going to talk to you about that today, but um, just thinking about this, be intentional with your thoughts. And, you know, I know so many friends of mine, their, their kids danced or they were in these big, intense sports things, and that's really fun. But the kids don't dance anymore and the kids don't play sports anymore. And it's just, you have to think about as adults, these kids don't dance, they don't play sports. You know what I'm saying? And you have to think intentionally about how much of your time with your family are you willing to give up for sports? How much do you wanna fight for? You know, if you say, okay, I wanna have three days a week for dinners or something, then you can still have everything that you need. You can still have sports or dance or whatever it is you wanna have, but I just wanna get you thinking and praying and asking the Lord, how does he want your schedule to look? And if, if you are, uh, you know, we have family members that love sports and they're very active in sports. And so I'm not saying anything negative about sports. I'm just saying think intentionally about your life and what changes that you wanna make moving forward, okay? So that's what I want, that's the, my main gist of it. Okay, so let me see here, let me say hello to everybody. And hi, Anne-Marie and Chelsea, and oh, your connection is bad. Oh, is anybody else's connection bad? Um, can someone tell me if you're, is it my connection? Are you guys, can you see me okay? Uh, someone let me know while I'm doing this. Okay, so, um, hi Rhonda, and uh, Rhonda said my connection, okay, uh, Anne-Marie, uh, Mary Jo, hi Mary Jo, and Danita says family dinners, sa Saturdays at home, walks and bike rides together, not wearing makeup and less shopping, family discussions about God's word and praying together, less of the world and more of Jesus. I love that, Danita. Okay, so Danita, you said you can see it. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna get right into our time today, but before I do, I wanna make some announcements. Um, so don't forget, and we, we have some really, it lagged a little bit. Oh, okay, I hope it's better now. Okay, hi, Crystal. Okay, is it better now? But it's working okay now. Okay, thank you so much, Rich, thank you. Okay, so in case you didn't know, I mean, we've been talking about this book a lot at Help Club, okay? It's the Help Club for Moms book, but I don't know if you, if you knew or not, but we're on Audible now. It's an audio book. 
an audio book. I can't even believe it. We're in, we have an audio book on Audible and it's super cool. And so if you like audio books more than regular books, go ahead and check it out on Audible and Amazon. And then this one right now, I'm pretty sure is still on sale at Harvest House Book Publishers for only $8.99 with free shipping. If you use the code stay home, all one word, stay home at Harvest House Publishers, $8.99. That's it. It's normally $14.99 and free shipping if you use stay home, okay? And then this one is our companion guide. And you guys, you get free videos with this. And one of them is how not to yell with, at your kids. And that's with Crystal Willis, who's on this video. Uh, she's one of the watchers today. Uh, but you can get this on Amazon for $14.99. And it's a Bible study that goes along with this book. It's a companion guide Bible study. And both of these come with printables. You guys, it's a really great deal. So go check it out on Amazon. Okay. So uh, let me see what Kendra says. What does Kendra say? Spending time with our children individually. Yes, helping with schooling on difficult school projects has been really insightful and even brought my husband and I closer in a family mindset. I love that, Kendra, so much. And hi, Tammy. And uh, Elizabeth says, more family time reading together, reading good chapter books. Amen. I love that. As a whole family in the evenings, doing jigsaw puzzles all together, going on daily family walks and hikes and bike rides. Hasn't it been nice, guys, not having competition from friends? I mean, our kids had so many friends. And I would go to great lengths to find friends for my kids who were godly, from godly families. I would drive 30 minutes to pick them up. I would take them out to lunch. I would pay for everything. But I also felt like we were intentional with our kids growing up to where they were just having time with just a family, brother, sister time. You know, we had special toys for our kids where they would have just special brother, sister time. And I think it's, it, I think that's been a big blessing about this season is that you don't have everybody knocking on your door, neighborhood kids knocking on your door all the time. So don't get me wrong, friends are important, but I think these family relationships are worth cultivating and thinking about how can you build those brother-sister relationships within your own home? Because the, guys, these kids are who are gonna grow old together. When you're gone, your kids are still gonna have each other. So it's so important to think about this. You know you guys have had more brother-sister time. You've had more time doing puzzles, just like Elizabeth said. And so I think it's important to think strategically about how you want your home to look, how you want things to be. Like uh, my son-in-law and my daughter, uh, they just, they're so sweet. They're wonderful parents and they have a little one-year-old and they made this uh, family blueprint of things that they want to do for their family as a family. Values, you know, they, they realize that they're just new parents, but they wanted to put this together. One of them is Saturday is family day and I love it. And so they take Saturday and they're just young parents they take Saturday and they do stuff together as a family and it's really sweet. <clears throat> so anyway, think intentionally about your family. Okay, so Rich says we all need that one not to yell at our kids. Amen. That's so true. Okay, so um, Brittany. Hi, Brittany and Katya and Kinga. Family first. That's right, Rich. Okay. All right. So today I'm going to be talking. So this is the book. If you're new to Help Club, this is what we're going through this semester. Okay. It is called The Wise Woman Loves. Okay. And this week we are on week two of Love Your Children, just so you know. So I'm going to be reading some things from this book. The uh, Be the Fun Mom uh, devotional is in this book, just so you know, you can get this on Amazon. Okay. But let me just tell you a little bit about what we're doing this week. And I want to tell you about our mom tips. So every week we have mom tips. And I think that you guys, we need to be talking more about mom tips uh, because um, mom tips are, they're in our books. We, we put, they're free on our, on our uh, help club page and in our online group. If you're not a member of the help club for moms online group, I highly suggest it. It's wonderful. We go through our curriculum there. But we had the mom tips come out Saturday and they were, they're free and they, they just come out. But these are different ideas on things to do with your kids this week and in your home. And, and there's four categories on how to build your spirit, how to love your husband, how to love your children, and how to care for your home. And I just wanted to read some to you today. And if you, if you want to, you can go back on the main Help Club for Moms page, this page, and you can look at these. But listen to these. So... These are some of the mom tips. So keep working on your prayer binder for two days this week, but keep it short, only 15 to 20 minutes. Remember, you can easily put your prayers on your phone. 
Now, if, if you don't know what a prayer binder is, and if you're new to Help Club, this is a prayer binder. We, we have a post on the Help Club for Moms page at helpclubformoms.com. It's called How to Make a Prayer Binder. And we've been working on this for the past couple of weeks in our groups. And so it's part of the mom tips. So if you set a timer and you just, all this is is certain prayers that you have for your children. Okay, and it's super easy. You just write them on notebook paper. And if you go to the post um, uh, on, our, on our website, helpclubformoms.com, there's examples of a bunch of prayers to pray for your kids and to put them into a prayer binder. Okay, so, um, and I have all of my prayers from when my kids were growing up on that, on the Help Club for Moms page. But part of the mom tips this week is um, working on your prayer binder. And then another one would be forego a family. Now, this is different. This was written before the um, shelter in place, but it says forego a family treat, a favorite treat like a latte, and save the money for a special night out or a gift for your husband. This is under the Wise Woman Loves Her Husband section. Maybe he has mentioned wanting something uh, in passing for which you can save up and surprise him by practicing some self-control. And I don't know about you guys, but with the shelter in place, I've actually been able to save money. <laughs> and so, you know, you could take this time the next few weeks and just save, a, save up some money to buy your husband something that he's been thinking about or that he's been wanting. I think that that's just a really sweet gesture or taking him out to his favorite place to eat or something. It's just, you know, now we can save money because we're at home. And then under the wise woman uh, loves her children, and I love how Elizabeth says this, pick out a favorite chapter book to read at bedtime. You will enjoy reading it, um, you will enjoy reading it to your children, and the joy of reading is contagious. You will all find yourselves looking forward to bedtime this week. And when our kids were growing up, we used to have a lot of read-alouds. I have a whole ton of books that uh, I should just do a read aloud mentoring Monday sometime because we read so many books out loud to our kids. And you know, whenever we read to our children, they, uh, now when they were in bed, we read to them in bed, but we would read to our children like what a lot of you guys are having to do with your kids at home. You're having to read to your kids or, or um, you want to read to your kids, which is awesome. Uh, but with our children, what we did was we would give them things to do while we read to them. So at the table, we would um, we would have them. They could have Play-Doh. They could have watercolors. They uh, they could crochet. They could knit. They could color. They could draw. Whatever they want to do at the table while I read out loud to them. And it really um, it really made reading time fun. You know, if if we're trying to read out loud to our children and they're just sitting still, I I think that's really hard for them. But if you have like a little craft area in your kitchen um, that you could put some of your craft supplies to where you you know that these are the read aloud craft supplies or a bin you could have a bin for just read aloud craft supplies and you you go into that bin and you that right before you're reading to your children if you're reading to them their schoolwork and you know you can always read aloud to to your younger children the older children's books you would not believe how much younger children can take in um, by uh, being read aloud to and so by having that bin and having crafts or whatever the kids need and they could pull it out while you read to them, it will make reading time so much more enjoyable in your home. Just a little tip, okay? And then the last mom tip for this week that I wanna highlight is, um, is doing the five o'clock pickup club four days a week and it's super easy. You just set a timer for 15 minutes and you, everyone goes everywhere and they clean up. We used to do this with our kids when, when they were growing up and it's, it's called the five o'clock pickup and you set a timer at five o'clock and you turn on some fun music and it's only 15 minutes and you just say, everybody run around everywhere and clean up stuff. And yes, they're gonna say things like, I didn't leave that there and that's not my stuff, but during the, fi the uh, 15 minute, the five o'clock pickup, sorry, everybody cleans up everything and puts it like, puts it away. So everybody just takes a turn and you run around and you have fun and you play some music and it's really, really fun. Okay. Kinga says, yes, that's what we do. I read and the girls play with kinetic sand. Oh, I love that. And they remember everything I read. You guys, you would not believe what your kids will uh, remember when you, when they, when you read out loud to them, when they have things to do at the table instead of just sitting there, it's really hard for kids just to sit there. And you know what you can do at the end, you can ask them questions. You can say, okay, so, so what did you think of this? Or, or what would you have been, what if you, what would you have thought if you had been this character in the story? And, and it's really, really good to ask your kids questions after you read aloud to them. 
Okay, so, so that was the mom tips for this week. That's what we're working on this week. And then let's go on to Be the Fun Mom. And if you're joining us in the book, it's on page 144. And it looks like this, Be the Fun Mom. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about a couple things here because I think, guys, I think that with this shelter in place, it's really easy to, it's easy to get lost right now, I think, um, because there's so much going on and there's so many things to worry about and <clears throat> it's not a very easy time to be a mom. And if your kids are home from school and you're having to do the teacher's assignments, it's really hard. And so I just want you to know that... Um, you're just living in a tough season, but I really wanted to help you today. I wanted to encourage you today because with God, all things are possible. Remember, with God, all things are possible, and God can help you to enjoy your children again, and God can help you during this season, and I just want you to know that I, I just, for all of you guys that are, are teaching your children at home, it's hard. Homeschooling is actually easier than I think teaching your children at home with teachers assignments I think that's actually a lot harder if you were homeschooling your kids and you could just read them Whatever you wanted or do whatever you want according to your family But when you're teaching them at home you have all these different assignments and zoom calls and it's 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 a lot of work And so I just want you guys to know that we've been praying for you guys here at help club and um, We're actually thinking about doing some more videos to help you guys And I think there's a lot of people that are actually interested in homeschooling in the fall because people don't know what's gonna happen in the fall so um, We're thinking about doing a little series of videos to help you guys But I just want to encourage you that it's a hard season right now But it doesn't mean that you can't be joyful in the midst of it. Okay, what does the Word of God say? Be joyful always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Be joyful always, in everything give, be joyful always, pray continually, in everything give thanks. And I do believe that we can be joyful. So let's talk a little bit about this. I love these two scriptures. It's on page 144, um, but I'll just read them. I'll read them aloud to you. It's Psalm 90, 12. And it's Psalm 113, 9. So Psalm 90, 12 and Psalm 113, 9. So I'm going to start with Psalm 90, 12. And it says, teach us to number our days that, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Whenever I was a young mom, I remember I would love it whenever older women would remind me that my kids are only in my home for a short time. I would love having those reminders that they're gonna grow up really fast. And it really helped me. And so I actually prayed this verse and then um, the other one that says, show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. And in the word, uh, it says, teach me to number my days and show me, O Lord, my life's end. And I think it's biblical to ask the Lord to help you number your days. It was interesting, I was speaking at a place uh, several months ago before all this started and I, I talked about, you know, the fact that they, um, that the moms, you know, kind of reminding them that they only have a short time with their kids and, and I, I was really surprised. A couple of moms looked like they were really, they were kind of rolling their eyes. Like, and I, I don't know if this is a thing, but I, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm not that savvy with blogs and stuff because I'm, I just didn't grow up like in the same generation you guys did and so, I'm not a big blog reader and stuff, so I'm actually kind of clueless about like influencers and stuff. I'm learning, but I'm actually kind of clueless about it. But I think that there was a thing where people, women didn't like older women telling them to, reminding them that their kids are going to grow up really fast. And I really didn't understand that. I don't understand how anyone could not want a reminder to enjoy your children in your home. I, I, I guess I can't understand that. Like the word of God says, teach me to number my days. And the word of God says, show me, O oh Lord, my life's end. And so I don't know where, why anyone wouldn't want the reminder. And so anyway, so that's just a side note, but I love reminders. Even now I have a sign in my tea cabinet I actually should just run and get it. I'm sorry. I'm going to go get it real quick. Hold on. <laughs> I'm back. 
Okay, so in my tea cabinet, I have this sign. And it says, what if I only had a year to live? I want to remind myself that my life is short. <laughs> I want to remember. And you know what? Praying and asking the Lord to show me, to teach me to number my days, and to show me my life's end, um, it really helped me. And I feel like my husband and I really enjoyed our children. And so I would encourage you to ask the Lord to help you to remember that your time is short on this earth and that your time with your kids is short. And so um, I just want to encourage you guys that. And then the other verse that I really love that was in the study on page 144 is Psalm 113, 9. And I love this so much. It says, he settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. He settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. And I love that scripture. And it talks about the fact that God wants to settle us as a happy mom. And he wants to help you enjoy your family. And I believe that we need to ask God to help us enjoy our family. I feel like every day you can commit your day to the Lord and ask him to fill you with a spirit of joy. Joy is a fruit of the spirit, you guys. But I think that we need to ask the Lord to help us. And so ask him to help you to number your days. Ask him to settle you as the happy mother of children. Ask him to help you enjoy your children more. Ask him. He will help you. He is so, oh, hi, Tanya. Um, he is so faithful and he will help you. Okay, so ask him to help you uh, to settle you as the happy mother of children. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to read this to you real quick. So and if you want to follow along, it's on page 144. So would you like an easy avenue that will lead straight to the heart of your children? Prayerfully become the fun mom. Now you might be saying, Deb, my day in and day out life as a mom is anything but fun. Do you know what it's like having mounds of laundry to do every day? There's no fun in that. Dearest mama, joy and fun are as important to your children as clean clothes to wear. These, these are important keys to their hearts, providing a way to give them joy-filled memories of their childhood. Your kids need to grow up in a happy home with a happy mom. Believe me, the old adage is still true. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Be the happy mom and let your kids see you enjoy your life at home with them. You guys, you want your kids to see you enjoying your life with them. Um, I think a lot of people don't want to get married when they get older and they don't want to have children because their parents acted like they weren't happy in their marriage or they didn't enjoy having kids. And so a lot of people don't want to have kids because they didn't see it modeled, joy. And I know that a lot of you guys, especially now with your school assignments and your husband being home and just everything and your problem, some of you guys are having to work a full-time job and do all this other stuff. But I know that I know that I know that when we ask God for wisdom, when we ask him for help, he is faithful and he will give it to us. And so if you're struggling in this area of joy, you can ask the Lord to help you to have more joy and he will do it. He will do it. He is so faithful. And I do believe that the, one of the biggest joy builders you could ever do in your own life and in your own heart is having a daily time with Jesus, spending time with him, reading the Bible, praying for your day, even if it's 15 minutes. Because I started, you know, with 15 or 30 minutes, whatever it was I was ever I had time for. But it was always 15 minutes spending time with God when my kids were little. And that little bit of time in the morning or at night, I like doing it in the morning because I needed an attitude adjustment. Um, but that time spending with God is key to helping you enjoy your life with your kids. Our pastor, one of our pastors, Pastor Andrew at New Life Church, preached a wonderful sermon this weekend. And he talked about the fact that when Moses died, his eyes were not dim and he, he was not weak. And God, he was 120 years old. And Pastor Andrew was bringing up the scripture that talked about the fact that when God, uh, when Moses died, um, he was still strong and active and had perfect eyesight. <laughs> and you guys know what? He spent time with God. He would go into the tent of meeting 
and he would spend time and the word says Moses talked with God face to face as a friend and he when he would come out of the tent he his face would shine because he had spent time with God the glory of the Lord shone in his face and he actually had to wear a veil because the people um, it, it, it scared them and so Moses had to wear a veil because when his face was glowing but guys spending time with God is like renewing your youth it will give you more joy it will help you to love your life by spending time with God and praying for your family and asking the Lord to help you so that's my number one joy builder tip I would say with you guys is to spend time with God okay so let's talk about these ideas Okay, so uh, number one, pray and ask God to help you to become a fun mom by creating a joyful, inviting, and comfortable atmosphere in your home. Um, tell your kids often how much you enjoy being their mom. It's so important that you tell your kids that you like being their mom and that you enjoy them. Let your kids know that you enjoy them. Tell them, I, and like when Jack, my son, came over last night, I just told him, I love being around you. You are so much fun. I love who God created you to be. I love how creative you are. He just bleached his hair. <laughs> he's And I love it. I think he looks so cute with his hair bleached. And, you know, he's just fun to be around. And I just tell him that all the time. I'm like, Jack, you're so fun to be around. I really enjoy you. And so I think it's important to tell your children that. And to smile at your family. Smile at them. I think sometimes if we were to just take a little, um, like a little moment and look in the mirror when you're angry and see what you look like, <laughs> it's pretty intimidating. Um, and but when we smile, did you guys know that when you smile, it active actually and uh, activates endorphins in your body. And so when you're smiling, it helps you be happy. And so even if you just went like this several times a day and just smiled, it makes you happy. Isn't that interesting that God wired us that way? It makes you happy, but smile at your children as much as possible. I used to have a sign at my kitchen sink that said, smile at me, mommy. And, and I had another one that said, laugh with me, have fun with me, play with me, mommy. I used to go out and jump on the trampoline with my kids when they were growing up. And, um, and it was just really fun. But enjoying your children and smiling at your children is, is a really easy way to enjoy them. Um, and... Um, you know, now is not, especially not with the shelter in place, now is not a time for House Beautiful, right? Now is not a time for House Beautiful. And if you can just make your home work for you as much as possible during the season when your kids are at home, like setting up different areas in your home, like we had what you call learning centers, and you can set them up or, or creative centers in your home. So like in our kitchen, we had read aloud things at our kitchen sink underneath the, not the kitchen sink, underneath one of the cabinets. I had a cabinet set aside for kids' craft ideas whenever we would read because I read the Bible to my kids no matter what. You know, we read out loud and and I would uh, teach them about God and my, when my husband did things with them about God we always gave them something to do or snacks or chocolate or tea or something like that and we also had this little cabinet and we called it like a little read aloud center and so that's where all their crafts were housed but you could have other learning centers in your home you have book baskets so when we get back to checking out books at the library if you have baskets in your home then you know where to go to find your library books and they're not all over the house right and you could have arts and crafts learning center. You could have um, Legos in a certain area. You could have blocks in a certain area. You could have sewing stuff and crochet stuff, you know, but make your home work for you right now because guys, you're gonna have so much time to have house beautiful. When your kids are gone or when they get older, you're gonna have so much time uh, for your house to be perfectly decorated. But right now, if you're having trouble doing that, it's okay. I mean, you can have decoration and centers, learning centers. I love Brandy Carson. She's our little how-to girl at Help Club, but she's got a beautifully decorated home, but it's all practical. And she has stuff that's practical out in her house all over the place, so I love her house. Okay, so um, uh, when, um, let's see. Okay, so I know this is gonna sound crazy, but um, and when we get off shelter in place, you're gonna have to start deciding, you know, about friends and how often you wanna have friends over. And I talked about this at the beginning of the video, so if you're just now tuning in, uh, go back to the beginning of the video, but um, be sure to um, invest, like I said earlier, invest in good friends for your children. 
uh, and and I I never expected the parents to reciprocate. So like if I knew of a godly kid or from a godly family or or a, a child that I wanted my my child to hang around with, I would go to great lengths to go get that child to buy their lunch, to take them out, to take them to the amusement parks wherever we were going, water parks. I wanted my children to hang around good kids. And so it's worth the investment uh, in being a fun mom. And so when you invite these kids over, share your food with them, share your home with them, let them be at home, um, you know, plan fun things for them to do. I know brother and sister is the most important relationship with your children. So if you're gonna, if you only have enough energy to plan fun things, then make sure you're planning with the brother sister stuff. Like in my home, we had blocks and games and certain things that, that I had at brother sister sister time uh, during the day when our kids were little and when they were at home we had just special blocks special toys that they could play with together but you know I do think it's important to have godly friends too and then this is another thing that I'm going to tell you about which um, I know it, it's it's it, you have to pray about this and I'm just going to say you do you okay because I know a lot of you guys this is a really hard issue but um, we did have video games in our home and the reason they they weren't the bad kind but the reason that we had video games was because we wanted our kids friends at our house and we wanted them to want to come over and so we did have video games and um and we did use timers and i will be honest with you it's a pain all of it is a pain because then they want to play video games all the time or and now get now you have like um, you have your phone like kids have phones. I mean, I don't even know how you guys handle with the phones and stuff. That's probably really hard. But video games were hard because they just wanted to play them all the time. But it actually taught them self government. And, you know, we'd give them timers and they would have to do the timer and then they would go over in the timer and have to go downstairs and say, hey, stop. You know, all, I mean, it's a pain. But I will say that when our son went off to college, he said that a lot of his friends were just in their rooms all the time playing video games because they weren't allowed to play them growing up. But my son learned self-government growing up, and so he didn't play video games the whole time at college because he knew that there were so many other things to be done. Okay, so just that's just something, a you-do-you thing, whether or not you want to do that or not. It's totally personal. Okay, and then the last thing is a, just a, an idea that I had. is, And, and when you could do this now, and you could, you could also do this later. Like you can do it now during shelter in place, but I do think it's fun uh, to have a rude Friday. So you can just do it with your kids. So we had rude Fridays almost every Friday and I'll tell you what a rude Friday is. So during the week, uh, our kids, you know, we wanted them to learn how to have nice table manners. We weren't sticklers, you know, but sometimes we would have what we call White House dinners, which is where we would set a really nice uh, table setting with china and candles. And it, the, the meal didn't have to be fancy, but I just wanted to teach them, you know, where the napkin goes, where the silverware goes. You know, they would help me set the table. We had tea times a lot. And so, you know, our children learned how to have tea and they learned the proper way to do it and all that other kind of stuff. Um, but we also had Rude Fridays, which Rude Friday was when they would invite their friends over on Friday night. We would order pizza and they would get to sit around the table and be rude and chew with their mouth open and they could burp at the table. They could have their elbows on the table. They could, it was so much fun. They absolutely loved Rude Friday. But now it's a little different because, you know, the kids can't be together. So what I was thinking that you guys might want to try is could they do a, 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 a Rude Friday Zoom call with a couple of their friends? And you could ask the moms ahead of time and maybe the moms could get pizza or it doesn't even matter what you eat, but they could just have a little Zoom call with their friends and have Rude Friday and each of them can be really rude at the dinner table with their friends having a little virtual dinner together. And you know, you're a fun mom because my mom arranged this whole thing for me and my friends to be able to Zoom each other and chew with our mouth open and burp and have a lot of fun. And so anyway, for now, maybe you could try a Rude Friday with your kids and then later on, whenever we can go uh, and have people over and stuff, maybe you could uh, have friends over on Fridays, but it's a really, really fun thing to do. Okay, the last thing I wanna say is I do believe that um, part of being a fun mom is you have to have an attitude adjustment every now and then. And so I've been noticing that the longer that we're on <laughs> shelter in place, I have had a propensity to have a bad attitude. And I think that that's, it, it just, with anything in our lives, it's easy to get a bad attitude. But the way to a good attitude is giving those thoughts to Jesus and asking him to help you to stop thinking things 
um, you know, we need to stop thinking about certain things that are stealing our joy. And the way that you do that is you give that thought to the Lord and you think of something different. Like the mind, the subconscious mind, we did this in the joy challenge. We, the joy challenge for moms is it's on Amazon. It's amazing. We did, we've done it twice as a ministry. It's really, really fun. But the number one thing I learned from that, from Tommy Newberry, cause we did this project with Tommy Newberry and he talked about the law of exchange. And the law of exchange is what you do is, instead of having that thought that all I do is work and I'm so tired and my kids fight and they're getting on my nerves, all these thoughts that are, are coming at you and stealing your joy, okay? And they might even be true, but it doesn't help to think them, right? And it certainly doesn't help to speak them. And so instead of having the thoughts, say, I'm just so tired, I'm sick of cleaning up after everybody, I'm sick of this shelter in place or whatever it is, Start thinking, switch your, give that thought to Jesus and say, Lord, I give that thought to you. Tell me what to think. Or you could have a thought ready to go like, I love my family. And immediately your subconscious mind can only hold one thought at a time. And immediately your subconscious mind will think something different. And so if you're having that thought, I'm, I just am sick of being stuck at home. Then you could say, just give that thought to the Lord and then say, I love my family. I love being together. We are a fun family. We have so much fun. I'm a fun mom. Thank you, God, for helping me be a fun mom. Do you see that? Do you see how that law of exchange works? If you're having a negative thought, you give that thought to Jesus. You submit that thought to him. It's 2 Corinthians, um, I think, 10, 5, that you give that thought to Jesus. And then you, you switch it out with a true thought or a thought that you want God to help you with. And if you're praying about being a fun mom and you're having a negative thought and you say, God, thank you that you're helping me be a fun mom today. Thank you. And if you're a seasoned mom, you can say, thank you, God, that I love my season. Thank you, God, that you have so much for me in my life. Even though I'm an empty nester, thank you, God, that you've got so many good things in store for me. And so that's called the law of exchange. And it's really, really a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, activity. Okay, so let me pray for us and um, share the video if you haven't shared the video already because there might be some of your friends that might want to watch it or might need tips. And uh, Danita says, I love the idea of being a fun mom. Rude Friday. I love Rude Friday. I loved it. Okay, so I'm going to pray. If you guys have any prayer requests, go ahead and leave them here. And I would love to, um, to pray for you. And if you're just now tuning in, uh, go back and watch the whole video on how to be a fun mom. Okay, so let me pray. And if you have a prayer request, you can, you can type it in while I'm praying. It's okay. I'll open my eyes. Okay? Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, God, that you... Your word says that you settle us as the happy mother of children. God, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, help us all to be happy moms in our homes. Help us to savor these days with our children. God, fill us to the brim with a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Just like Elisha asked Elijah for a double portion, God, we are asking you for a double portion of your Holy Spirit. We're asking you for a double portion of joy. God, we're asking you to help us to remember that a joy is a fruit of the Spirit and that we can have joy when we ask. So every single one of us, myself included, God, for each of us that are watching this video, God, give us a spirit of joy. Help us to savor these days with our children. Help us, God, not to be so run down and discontent that we don't enjoy these wonderful children that you've given to us for such a short time. So come, Holy Spirit, into each of our homes this week. Let us all have a great week. Show us ways to have fun in our own families with our own children. Bless every marriage. Bless every family relationship uh, represented here today. Keep us all healthy and safe. Thank you, God, that, Lord, we want to acknowledge you. The word says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight God we want to acknowledge the fact that you are the one that has slowed down the virus in America that you are the one that has made it to where it's not bad um like in other places, God, you are the one. And so, God, we want to acknowledge you and we want to say thank you. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for helping us. And we want to pray for all the people that are sick with COVID-19, God, that you will heal them, that you will protect them, that the ones that are in the hospital by themselves, like my friend Elizabeth, Lord, her husband can't even go see her. God, neither one of them have COVID. Please let her husband be able to go see her. And I'm praying for all the people that are in hospitals that are lonely. God, please fill them with your presence and your spirit and your love. God, be with the people 
working in hospitals and working on a cure and God, let it be a godly cure. Whatever it is that we get, God, let it be godly. Don't let it be evil. Whatever vaccine or anything, don't let there be bad side effects. And Lord, protect our nation from people who have evil desires on our nation and on the people. God, protect us from evil. God, give us things that are godly. Give us, protect us all by the power of your name. And God, we commit all of these things to you in Jesus' name. And did anybody have any prayer requests? Let's see. Hi, Madeline. Law of Exchange College students. Oh, okay. I'll do this right here. Okay. So, um, Lord, I pray for college students who are, are having finals. I can't even imagine these poor college students trying to virtually go to school. How discouraging that must be for them to give up a whole semester, and it's so expensive. And, Lord, bless these college students. Help them to do really, really well in their tests. And, God, I ask that you will open everything up for these college students in the fall. And, Lord, we are just so thankful for, um, for colleges and for our kids that are able to go in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. And uh, next week we're studying beauty. Okay. So in this book, whoops, where it is, the wise woman loves, we're studying beauty. Okay. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. I'll see you later. Bye. Mwah.